Welcome back. In this chapter, we will look at pointers. Pointer is one of the primary reasons um, C is so powerful and it's able to execute low level uh, programming. A pointer is a variable that holds the address of another variable of the same data type. It provides power and flexibility to the language. Initially, it may be confusing, but trust me, you will be better at it in a very short time. So the ampersand operator and the arrow operator are really useful in pointers. We will look at them very shortly. Why do we need pointers, right? Pointers are most efficient in handling arrays and structures. It reduces the length of the program. It is very fast. It allows dynamic memory management. We will see that shortly. So let's look at this program to demonstrate pointers. It's always better to use a comment at the start of a program to explain why the program is written. So first, integer i is 3. You have two variables. Both are local variables, right, or auto storage class. Int i is 3. It's initialized to 3. Now we are saying int star ptr. This is the way you will declare a pointer, right, a star in front of the name of the variable. And this is the data type that it can point to. So we are saying that this variable PTR will point to an type integer, another variable of type integer. In other words, this PTR can point to an integer data type. That's what it says. It says here pointer. So now that pointer is made to point to this variable. What it means is, if you print the value of PTR, it will have the address of I. So earlier we have seen that the ampersand symbol in scanf, which actually stores the address of a variable, right? So ampersand I will give you the address of I, where the I is there in local stack, right? So printf PTR's address and address of I. If you look at it, the value of PTR, right, which is printed here, is the same as the address of i both are the same that means ptr holds the address of variable i now we have seen this right now if you want to change the value you can change it using star ptr right so wherever this pointer is pointing that address right the value in that address if you want to change you can change it using star ptr now ptr is pointing to i so star PTR will change the value of I, right? So here, if you look at it, it's pointing here. So star PTR, we are doing it. So star PTR has changed the value to 4. Now, if I print star PTR, it will print the value pointed to by this PTR. So the value is, it's pointing to I. The value in I will get printed and the va i value are also we are directly printing using i. So both will be the same, 4 and 4, right? So star PTR and i are the same. Now, let's do a little complex one where we are saying, so star and ampersand are inverse, right? So it will cancel out each other, right? So star means value, ampersand is address. So now if you look at star and ampersand, you can just cancel them out. So it is saying PTR is equal to percentage x, right? So these two cancel out each other. So it will actually print out the address which is there in the PTR, which is the address of I. Again, star, star, ampersand, PTR. So the star and ampersand would cancel out each other. So star PTR is the value in PTR, right? So PTR, here PTR equal to percentage X, which will actually print the address of I. Here, these two cancel out, the star remains. So, star PTR equal to percentage D. So, the value pointed to by PTR, which is 4, will get printed. So, here if you see the address is getting printed, or address of I is getting printed. Here, the value is getting printed, right? So, this two get cancelled out. And then, star PTR equal to 4, right? That's what has come out here. Quick summary, integer I is 3. PTR is of type integer, right? So PTR is a pointer which points to a variable of type integer. So PTR is equal to ampersand i, which means that PTR points to i. The value of PTR will be the address of i. Ampersand gives the address of any variable. Now PTR percentage x, address of i is percentage x, Right now, both will be the same. We have seen this here, right? That is the value in PTR and the address of I, both are the same. 
star PTR, whatever is PTR is pointing to, that value it's going to change. So PTR is pointing to I. So the value in I will get changed to 4. Now PTR equal to percentage D. Star PTR is basically the value of uh, where PTR is pointing to, which is actually I. So I value we are printing using PTR and using I. Both are the same. 4 and 4 gets printed. Here, as I said, star and ampersand are inverse. So cancel out each other. So PTR will print the address of I. Here, these two cancel out. So star remains. Star PTR will point to the value in PTR, which is actually uh, the value pointed to by PTR, which is actually the value of I. So same program for character pointers as well. It will work. Char C equal to A. Now it holds, I mean, C is actually holding uh, A. PTR is not yet initialized. Right now we are making PTR point to C. So you see this. Basically, PTR will have the address of C. Now, if you're printing the PTR value and address of C, both will have FF00BD7. Right. So usually it's better to use percentage Xs to print the address. Also, percentage P is also used sometimes. So we are changing the value which is there in C using the PTR. So star PTR equal to B. Now you see that the value has changed. You print the value using the PTR as well as using C. Both are saying C. Now if you see the address and the value, both are. So let's look at this program, right? So here we have an integer pointer and a character pointer, right? What do you think would be the size of this pointer, right? Um, so here it points to, this points to an integer, this points to a character. Beginners might say that the integer pointer is 4 bytes and character pointer is 1 byte, right? Uh, it is not correct. The size of a pointer is um, same irrespective of whether it's an integer or character or float or a structure, right? That's because... The pointer holds the address, right? Irrespective of what is the size of the actual variable, the pointer always holds the address, so size remains the same. In a 64-bit compiler, uh, the address space is huge where it can point to, so it is 8 bytes. In a 32-bit compiler, it will be 4 bytes. Let's print here. This is a 64-bit compiler, so you will see that it is 8 bytes, right? The most important things to see is, the character pointer and integer pointer bore, both are of the same size. So let's look at this program. Integer i is 3, right? So star ptr equal to ampersand i. You can initialize a pointer directly like this. So star ptr equal to ampersand i. When you are declaring, you can directly assign the address of another variable, right? But if you have a separate statement saying star PTR equal to ampersand i, it is not correct because we are saying that we are changing the value, right, of PTR and initializing with address of i. This is not correct. PTR equal to ampersand i, this is what is correct, right? But during initialization, you can directly give the star PTR equal to ampersand i because we are declaring, defining that variable and at the same time, you are assigning the address of another variable to this. So this, once it's done, you can do this as well. These two actually, I mean, this line is irrelevant here because you have already initialized. Now, what we are trying to do, what we want to do is, we want to change the value of 3 to 4, right? i is pointing to 3. We want to change that value to 4. So we are doing the star ptr plus plus. And then we are printing the value of i. Guess what will be the output of this? So if your expectation is this will have a value 4, it is incorrect, right? So I will not have 4. Let's see what happens here. I equal to 3, star PTR is ampersand I, right? So now star PTR plus plus. What happens is this PTR plus plus will have the priority here, right? So unary operators have a higher priority than the star operator. So PTR will point to the next element. PTR equal to PTR plus 1 will happen. So it will point to the next element in the memory, wherever it is, it could be even an incorrect value. So it is actually taking star of that value, right? So it is not doing a change of the variable, right? So let's see this. So if you look at it, the value of PTR, PTR is pointing to the next element here. Uh, the value of i does not get changed. The value of i remains same, right? So now if you want to change this program, to make sure that the value of i is getting changed, right? You have to do this change here. 
So if you do this, what happens here is, now star PTR is the value of I. Now we are incrementing that. Now I gets incremented to 4. Let's see this. So here, if you do the star PTR plus plus, now the value in PTR is going to get changed. So that value which is currently 3 is getting changed to 4. So this is the right way to do it. Now if you print I, it will print 4.